Hi friends, in this lecture, we will discuss about the post correspondence problem. The post correspondence problem PCP is a popular undecidable problem introduced by ML Post in the year 1946. Later, the problem was found in to have many applications in the theory of formal languages. The post correspondence problem over an alphabet summation belongs to a class of yes or no problems and is stated as consider the tool is x is equals to x1 so on up to xn y is equals to y1 so on up to yn of non-empty strings over an alphabet summation. The PCP is to determine whether there exists a sequence i1, i2, so on up to im where ij is in between 1 to n such that xi1, xi2, so on up to xim is equals to yi1, yi2, so on up to yim. Note that the indices ij's need not be distinct. It means they can be repeated. M may be greater than N. And if there exists a solution for a PCP, there exists infinitely many solutions. And that is, if a PCP problem has a solution, it may have more than one solutions. Post correspondence problem can be treated as a game of dominoes. Let each domino contain some xi in the upper half and the corresponding substring of y in the lower half. A typical domino consists of xi as the upper half, yi as the lower half. The PCP is equivalent to placing the dominoes one after another as a sequence where repetitions are allowed. To win the game, the same string should appear in the upper half and the lower half. So, winning the game is equivalent to the PCP having a solution. So, does the PCP with two lists X and Y have a solution? Given x1, x2, x3, its corresponding y1, y2, y3, we must determine whether there exists a sequence of substrings of x such that the string formed by this sequence, that is upper half, and the string formed by the sequence of corresponding substring of y, lower half, are identical. So in this PCP problem, to find an identical sequence such that the upper half is equal to lower half, first we have to find out, we must start with which sequence, i as 1 or 2 or 3. I can start with i as 1 because x1 starts with 1 and y1 also starts with 1. I can start with 2 because 2 also x2 starts with 1, 0 and y2 starts with 1, 0. Whereas I cannot start with 3 because x3 starts with 1 whereas y3 starts with 1. 0. So, the sequence can start with 1 or 2. It cannot start with 3. So, if i is equals to 1, x1 is 1 and its corresponding y is y1 is equals to 1, 1, 1. Next, after selecting i is equals to 1, you can see here 
a 1 on the upper half equal to 1 on the lower half. Whereas, there are two extra 1s in the lower half. So, we must select i such that it will be having two consecutive or starting with two consecutive 1s. If you see here, x1 doesn't have two consecutive ones, nor x2, nor x3. So this sequence fails. Next, continue with i is equals to 2. x2 is 1, 0, 1, 1, 1. Corresponding y2 is 1, 0. So you can see here, 1, 0, 1, 0 matches. We have three extra ones on the upper half. To compensate these three extra zeros on the upper half, we have three ones in the lower half. So next I'll select I as 1 where x1 is 1 and the corresponding y1 is 1. Three ones. Now, this one matches with this one, this one matches with this one, this one matches with this one. Now, there is one extra one on the upper half which must be compensated at the lower half. So again we have to go for trial and error method until we get a sequence. So again I have a 1 here and 3 ones here. I'll repeat as said it can be repeated. I'll take i as 1 as 1 1 1 can see here this one is compensated here this one is compensated here now again there is one extra in the lower half which must be compensated so what if i go for selecting i as 3 just see here if i as 3 then x3 is 1 0 and the corresponding y3 is a 0. Now you can see here, this extra 1 is equivalent to this. This corresponds, this 0 corresponds to this 0. Now there is no extra bits in x and y stream. That is, the upper half is 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 0, which is equivalent to the lower half, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 0. Hence, the sequence obtained is 2, 1, 1, 3. The required sequence obtained is 2, 1, 1, 3, where m is equals to 1, 2, 3, 4. So m is equals to 4. Hence, the PCP has a solution. In the note 1, we had defined that the indices need not be distinct. So here is an example where i is equals to 1 is repeated twice in this sequence. So let's see the second problem. PCP consisting of two lists, x1, x2, x3, and their corresponding y1, y2, y3. We have to check whether this PCP has a solution. If it has a solution, then we have to identify a sequence where the upper half is equivalent to lower half. So to find the sequence, first I have to find out 
which will be the first substring i is equals to 1 or 2 or 3 i can start with i is equals to 1 as x 1 is 1 1 0 and the corresponding y also starts with 1 1 0 i can even start with 2 as x2 starts with two zeros and y2 also starts with two zeros. Whereas I cannot start with i is equals to 3 because x3 starts with 0 whereas y3 starts with a 1. So I am left with only two possibilities starting with a 1 or a 2. Now let us see the case where i is equals to 1. x1 is 1, 1, 0. y1 is 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 0. So you can see here these three bits match with these three bits, 1, 1, 0. And in the denominator side, we are left with 1, 1, 0. So to compensate this 110, I must search a i value such that its numerator has 110. So the only possible numerator having 110 is again i is equals to 1. So if I have i is equals to 1, x i is 1 is equals to 110, y1 is equals to 110. 110. Now, this 110 at the denominator end is equivalent to this 110 at the numerator. But again, we are left over with a substring 110, 110. So, this sequence of infinite ones will not generate two identical strings. So next choice left over is i is equals to 2. If i is equals to 2, we have x is equals to x2 is equals to 0, 0, 1, 1, y2 is equals to 0, 0. So numerator and denominator side two zeros are matched and at the numerator end we are left with two ones. And to compensate those two ones at the denominator side I must have two consecutive ones. And that is possible in i is equals to 1 and i is equals to 3. So we'll take both the possibilities i is equals to 1 and i is equals to 3. I'll just copy it on where i is equals to 2, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0. These two zeros are compensated. To compensate 1, 1. We have selected i is equals to 1 or i is equals to 3. So I have two possibilities. So let us see the first possibility where i is equals to 1. So I have 1, 1, 0 and y1 is 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 0. Now you can see here the numerator two ones are compensated with these two denominators. Next, if you see here, numerator side we have a 1, whereas in the denominator side we have a 0. So there is a mismatch. So with this sequence of 2, 1, we cannot continue further. So left over with last alternative or last option, wherein i is equals to 3. If i is equals to 3, I have 0, 1, 1, 0 as x3, its corresponding bit as 1, 1, 0 as y3. Now, 
if you see these two ones are equivalent to these two ones in the denominator this zero is compensated with this zero again we are left over with one one zero in the numerator side to compensate that and make the denominator equivalent we must find the next i such that the denominator starts with 1 1 0 so the new denominator here is 1 1 0 we have two options again 1 and 3 so i'll take 1 here as the first option so if it is equals to 1 then x1 is 110, y1 is 110110. Now you can see this 110 is compensated here, and this 110 is equivalent to this 110. Now you can see both the numerator string and denominator string are equivalent. For the sequence 2, 3, and 1. So, this problem also has a solution wherein it obt obtains a sequence i is equal to 2, 3, 1, wherein both the strings, upper half and the lower half strings, are equivalent with each other where m is equals to 1 2 3 thus this pcp has a solution with a sequence 2 3 1 let us see another pcp problem which has no solution this pcp problem of two lists x and y has no solution because for each substring xi belongs to x and yi belongs to y, the length of xi is always less than length of yi. For example, x1 is length is 2, y1 length is 3. So 2 is less than 3 x2 length is 1, y2 length is 2, so 1 is again less than 2. x3 length is 1, y3 length is 2, again 1 is less than 2. Hence, the string generated by sequence of substrings of x is shorter than the strings generated by the sequence of corresponding substrings of why? Therefore, this PCP has no solution. A note, if the first substring used in the PCP is always X1 and Y1, then the PCP is known as modified post correspondence problem. Let us see an example of modified post correspondence problem with the two lists x and y with i is equals to 1, 2, 3, 4. So we have to find a sequence. As stated, the modified PCP starts with x1, y1. x1 is 1, 1, y1 is a 1. So first one is matched with the first one of y and in the numerator side there is a extra one which must be compensated at the denominator end so at the denominator end to get one we can have one two three so by using trial and error method you can continue at present, I will go for selecting 3 as my next 
I value. Numerator is 0, 1, 1, 1. That is x3. Corresponding y3 is 1, 0. Now you can see here, this 1 corresponds to this one. This 0 corresponds to this 0. Now at the numerator side, we are left with three ones. To compensate, we need three ones at the denominator end. And the best choice is go for i is equals to 2. i is equals to 2, x2 is 1, and y2 is having three ones. Now you can see here, these three ones are compensated with these three ones and one extra one at the numerator end to be compensated at the denominator. So I'll go for again i is equals to 2. 1, 1, 1, 1. So this one is compensated with this one, this one with this one, and again at the denominator, I am left with a 1. So next, I will go for selecting i is equals to 4. x4 is 1, 0, y4 is a 0. This one is matched with this one, and this 0 is matched with this 0. With the sequence 1, 3, 2, 2, 4, we got x and y strings identical to each other. So this PCP has a solution with a sequence 1, 3, 2, 2, 4 with m is equals to 5. Thus, PCP has a solution. As we had stated before in note 2, m may be greater than n. So here is an example where m is equals to 5 and n is equals to 4 and m is greater than n. Let us discuss a theorem on PCP. The PCP over summation for the length of the summation is greater than or equal to 2 is unsolvable. It is possible to reduce the PCP to many classes of two outputs yes or no problems in the formal language theory. The following results can be proved by the reduction technique applied to PCP. First, if L1 and L2 are any two context-free languages over an alphabet summation whose length is greater than or equal to 2. There is no algorithm to determine whether or not L1 intersection L2 is null. L1 intersection L2 is a context-free language. L1 is a subset of L2 and L1 is equals to L2. Second, if G is a context sensitive language, there is no algorithm to determine whether or not L of G is null, L of G is infinite and X0 belongs to L of G for a fixed string x0. Third, if g is a type 0 grammar, there is no algorithm to determine whether or not any string x belongs to summation star is in L of g. We discussed about what do you mean by a post correspondence problem? Definition of post-correspondence problem. Given a problem 
whether it has a solution or not. Thank you.